Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing this landscape in colored pencil, but I'm going to be focusing on these clouds in the middle. And this was requested by one of the viewers, but I was planning to do it anyway because I wanted to practice drawing a sky and the clouds in colored pencil because this is a little bit more challenging than it is with pastels. So let's have a look. It's going to be a smaller size drawing, about 5 times 8 inches. I'm using a, a 1000 grit sandpaper and I'm going to be working with Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. Um, the first thing I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm working on the sketch and the composition. So I need to decide where the tree will be placed because I wanted to put a large tree in the foreground on the right and I uh, need to determine where these clouds will be. I decided to place them in the middle, kind of looming over the horizon. And uh, even though this surface can take multiple layers, if I can keep an area clean just by planning the composition, I will do that. So here I decided that uh, the top part of the paper will be the canopy of the tree. That's, uh, that's going to be obscuring that part of the sky and for the sky I'm going to use a number of different blues. I'm going to use the uh, ultramarine and the uh, the light ultramarine and the sky blue. So I wanted to create a gradient starting from a slightly darker blue at the top and getting gra uh, gradually lighter and lighter uh, near the horizon. And of course the clouds themselves will be even lighter so that they would stand out against the background. Uh, I did a little bit of blending using my blending tools, uh, blending stumps and brushes, but most of the blending process was done through layering, layering uh, lighter pencils on top of the darker pencils. Because this way it just looks better and it looks a bit smoother uh, with less texture and less of the background color coming through because my background color here, the color of the sandpaper, is a little bit darker uh, than uh, the color of the sky that I'm trying to achieve so um, so if I can uh, avoid uh, that background color coming through uh, that's usually a good idea and to achieve that you have to cover the, uh, the paper very thoroughly you have to put a few layers over it so I'm uh, layering a couple of these different blues and that's going to be my sky and after that I'm going to start working on the clouds but like I said the key here is to blend these blend these tones together well and to avoid having texture because I don't want anything any uh, distracting texture here in the background I just want a fairly smooth gradient. Of course this is much easier to do in pastels. Here it took a lot, uh, took a lot longer than it would with, uh, with pastels but it can still be done and after all colored pencils have some advantages of their own obviously. They have some advantages of uh, the pastel pencils and pastels. So there are always uh, ways to adapt so I'm making this uh, bottom portion of the sky near the horizon, I'm making that a bit lighter using that lighter bit blue which is the sky blue and then kind of uh, uh, creating a gradual transition towards that darker area using the light ultramarine color. I've expanded my range of colors of, of these Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils because my sister bought me a whole bunch of them. She bought me a large set and now I have more colors to work with and I have more blues to work with so I decided to put that to work in this landscape. Now before I move on to the clouds I just want to say a few general words about drawing clouds. So if you want to draw clouds the first thing that you need to do is draw a shape or a cloud and the shape of the clouds uh, can vary quite a bit. They come in all shapes and sizes, but let's uh, let's do a simple shape like this. It's almost 
cartoonish but it doesn't really matter it's good for now so our cloud is going to be kind of like this but a little bit more complex so the first thing you need to understand is that uh, if clouds are of lighter color almost white uh, in order for them to stand out the background needs to be darker so here uh, the blue sky needs to be dark enough for the cloud to stand out so you need to create that contrast uh, and uh, the edges are also very important sometimes the edge will be clean sometimes it will be a little bit blurry that's up to you to decide and it also depends on the shape of the cloud uh, so once you do that you have to shade the cloud uh, the cloud itself you have to understand that clouds are three-dimensional objects and three-dimensional objects have their volume and depth and you need to decide where the light source is so if the light source is uh, here on the right uh, this lower side and the left side is going to be darker so uh, right now I'm just shading a sphere to show you how the how a simple shape interacts with the light source and now uh, imagine that a cloud like this one is a little bit more complex than a sphere this, the, the, the light source is coming from the same direction and we'll just shade the uh, left side and the bottom side a little bit more to make it a bit darker now to make this cloud a bit more complex uh, we can uh, start defining some smaller shapes within this larger shape um, so let's make this just a little bit darker first so like I said the light source here is coming from the same direction as with the sphere on the right and we can maybe imagine that this uh, uh, shape of a cloud consists of a number of um, different shapes spherical shapes maybe so if I want to make I, if I want to define another smaller shape within this larger shape I can just do a bit of erasing here or I can use a white color pencil it doesn't really matter so if I do a little bit of erasing here we get a lighter a portion of lighter value here and another shape is starting to pop out you can start to feel like this shape here and this shape here another shape another lighter shape is starting to pop out and bulge out and that way you can define uh, that three-dimensional shape uh, of the object and give it more volume because like I said clouds are three-dimensional objects and you need to be able to show their light side and their shadow side and to give that feeling of volume and depth to the viewer. So the first thing that I'm going to do here before I start putting in the lighter white areas is I'm going to do a bit of shading with uh, with the sky blue pencil which is a very light pencil but I just I'm just going to use it to give myself an idea where sh some of the shadow areas will be. So here in this case the light source is coming again from the right side and from above naturally so all of these portions which are facing upwards and to the right will be lighter and this is where I'm going to be using more of the white color pencil uh, now this is kind of like a large mass of clouds uh, which is towering up above the horizon and I want to make it look like the top edge is a lot more defined and uh, there should be more contrast between that sky and the top edge of the cloud and of course these uh, these parts of the cloud which are facing away from the light source which are on the left side and uh, on the bottom of the cloud they should be darker so the first thing that I need to do is I need to cover the larger portion of the of this cloud with a lighter color and then maybe I can put in some slightly darker areas and then I can go over those uh, darker areas uh, with a lighter color pencil with a white color pencil again uh, creating some additional highlights or just uh, blending and removing some of the textures because I want this to I don't want this to have too much texture and too much detail Uh, so here I'm just sort of defining some of the edges 
uh, outer edges of the clouds and I also uh, started shading a little bit but I am still not shading the largest portion of the cloud. So like I said this uh, left side is going to be a bit darker and all of these lighter portions will be the part of the cloud which are sticking out and facing towards the light source. So now I decided to speed up the process a little bit and use a bit more of the white colored pencil and I started covering this large area using, using my white colored pencil just to uh, create that base lighter tone and after that I'm going to go into uh, defining the larger relationships between the light side and the shadow side and once that is done I'm going to be defining some of these smaller shapes so that the, the whole group of clouds would look a bit more interesting and a bit more complex. So I need to cover all of this with a white colored pencil and you can see how nicely the clouds stand out against that background now that's why I said that it's important uh, for that sky to be darker so that we can create the contrast between, between the cloud and the background. Now once the larger portion of the cloud is covered and once I've removed all of these uh, darker spaces where the background color the, the background color of the paper is coming through once that is done I can start doing a bit more shading and uh, not all of the edges need to be clean some of the edges can be a little bit less defined like maybe the uh, the, the clouds are dispersing a little bit they're carried in the wind uh, so you want to be able to show some movement in that mass of clouds but the more important thing of course will be the contrast not only between the cloud and the background but also between the light side and the shadow side of the cloud even though I can put in areas of lighter value on top of the darker areas uh, on, on this surface, on this sanded surface, that too has its limitations. So whenever I can put a lighter color directly onto sandpaper without any layers under it, that's uh, probably best. But uh, like I said, sometimes I have to put lighter layers on top of the darker ones. So now I'm starting to uh, draw in some of the shadow areas and for that I'm just going to be using that sky blue uh, colored pencil that's uh, the lightest blue that I used here and uh, the shadow side of the cloud is going to be lighter overall than the background color of the sky because uh, I want the, the whole cloud to stand out against the background so the whole background needs to be a bit darker than the shadow side of the cloud although the contrast between the shadow side of the cloud and the sky will be a little bit less uh, pronounced than the contrast between those lighter sides lighter portions of the cloud and the background so I'm going to be doing the shadow side using this sky blue colored pencil now the thing is here um, I've already put down a little bit of it first and then I put down a bit of white color pencil on top so I created some areas which aren't completely white but they're still not dark enough so I'm going to be putting a little bit more of this shadow color back in and the thing is that this is creating a bit of texture while I'm doing it and you don't want that you want uh, you want the um, surface of the clouds to be a bit smoother looking with less detail and less uh, variation in texture and uh, to do that all you have to do is go over those darker areas with a white colored pencil and you just control the pressure and you muddy those darker areas a little bit you basically use a lighter colored pencil as a blending tool so as you can see you can use a white colored pencil as a blending tool to soften 
some of the areas where there is too much texture but you can see already that I'm starting to define some of the shadow areas and how some of the lighter portions of that cloud are starting to pop out they're starting they're starting to feel like they're sticking out and this is all there is to it really any area that you cover with a darker color is going to feel like it's in the shadow and any area that you uh, cover with a lighter color with a white colored pencil is going to feel like it's popping out and facing the light source and that's basically how you explain shape to the viewer it's not very complicated all you have to do is keep in mind some of the general uh, rules of shading and it doesn't really matter if you're shading a very simple object or a more complex object like this one uh, it's all the same it, it'll just take a little bit longer but here in this phase uh, now that I've defined all of the shadow areas and the lighter areas I'm just going over some of these edges and maybe enhancing the contrast between the lighter uh, portions and the darker ones and also going over some of the outer edges uh, trying to uh, make that outer shape a little more natural but another thing uh, that I'm also doing is I'm using that white color pencil as a blending tool to soften the texture in some of the shadow areas where I had to put some of this darker pencil on top of the on top of the lighter pencil so I hope that they're starting to look good and I'm hoping that my explanations and my demonstrations were good enough for you like I said this was requested by one of the viewers and he was kind of persistent about it I don't normally do requests but this is something that I was planning to do anyway and I wanted to do a full scene because I think that this is going to turn out to be a nice looking little landscape if I were planning to do this on a larger format I think I would probably prefer to use pastels but colored pencils are great for details and they're great for drawing smaller sized pieces. I'm just putting down some finishing touches on these clouds uh, going back in with a sharp white colored pencil to define some of the details uh, some of the to put put in some of the final touches and maybe make some of those lighter portions stand, uh, stand out against the darker ones uh, but I think the, the, the cloud already looks very decent and I'm soon going to be moving on to the to the rest of the of this landscape especially the tree and the canopy of the tree at the top which is what I really have to do next so normally when I draw I work from top to bottom and from left to right here I made an exception because I wanted to focus on those clouds but now I'm putting in uh, some uh, uh, some ochre tones for the lighter parts of those tree trunk uh, of those branches and the tree trunk, and I'm going to be combining that with some brownish tones. But on top of that, I'm going to be drawing some foliage. I'm going to be using a couple of different greens and. Uh, I'm going to be using a lighter green for some of the lighter for some of the lighter leaves and for the shadow areas I'm going to be using a combination of this darker green and uh, and a black colored pencil I often like to combine a black colored pencil with uh, green pencils when I draw foliage and I find that it works pretty well so here I'm going over some parts of the foliage which need to which need to be darker just using my black colored pencil uh, now another thing that I need to mention when you're drawing uh, the canopy of a tree uh, in many of my demonstrations where I did drawings of trees these trees were usually a little bit smaller in size and when you're drawing smaller trees like that you need to produce a finer texture but here when I want to draw a tree which is viewed from up close 
and the leaves naturally are going to appear larger so what you want to do is you want to create slightly larger marks for those leaves or for those uh, clusters of leaves and I'm doing that uh, using um, using my colored pencils and here I'm actually okay with using dull colored pencils because a dull colored pencil will produce those larger marks of unpredictable shapes and another thing that I like to do is I like to vary the direction and the and the shape of those marks so that those leaves would look as random and as realistic as possible. I'm also using some blues to go in between those branches and those leaves to make it look like uh, the sky is coming through, the light of the sky is coming through some parts of the canopy. So I don't want the canopy uh, to be too simple and to obscure too much of the sky. I want the, I want the light to be coming through some parts of the canopy and I uh, want to make the structure of the tree uh, look a little more complex. So as for these branches, like I said, first I used a bit of that ochre uh, because I like that warm, lighter color. And then I'm going to use some browns and even some black for some of the darker tones. But I like the twisted shape of these branches here, kind of growing out to the side. And uh, now I'm just going to draw some uh, darker shadow areas, darker uh, portions of foliage around them uh, because a, a lot of that foliage is going to be in the shadow kind of tucked inside and uh, hidden from the from the light source. In case you're wondering about the specific colors I used I think I used a May green uh, for the lighter green tones for the foliage and I used the permanent olive green for the darker greens and then like I said I combined that with the black um, so th those two I felt were enough now notice on the branches for some of the lightest portions of the branches I even added a touch of ivory colored pencil which is a lot lighter than the browns that I used so those were the greens I used um, there they have a bit of a yellowish component to them. I really like that may green color. Now as for these branches um, they can be pretty complex and I know that uh, I'm going over this part of the drawing a little bit quicker. Most of this is in time-lapse but I'm thinking about doing uh, another video where I will focus on drawing foliage and branches like I did in charcoal but this time for colored pencil. Now of course if you want to see longer videos you can always check out my Patreon because there's uh, lots of full length and real time footage there and uh, with longer narration, more detailed explanations and things like that. So if you want more content and longer videos, you should check out my Patreon. Anyway, uh, notice that I added a, uh, another larger, darker portion of um, uh, leaves on the bottom uh, here to the left. And I'm going to go over that with a little bit of that darker green just to break the monotony and to add some green tones and here and there I'm even going to throw in a few of those uh, lighter leaves using a may green to make it look like uh, one of the leaves or just a few of the leaves are kind of sticking out from that shadow area and are catching light from above. Uh, touches like that, touches of lighter color are what makes the canopy appear a lot more realistic. And it, uh, it creates more depth in your drawing. So I'm also adding, I'm adding some more of these shadow areas and I, while, I'm doing that, uh, while I'm doing this, as you can see here and there, I'm adding a bit of those blue tones in between the branches and in between the leaves uh, just to make it look like we can see some of the sky 
through them but here at the top I'm just gonna make it all leaves or foliage and the sky is going to be completely obscured in this top top right portion of the drawing and I'm first gonna add in some of these darker bits the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, I want to know where the shadow areas will be and also uh, when I put the black colored pencil first it's a lot darker than if I layer it on top of some lighter pencils. So once again like I said on this surface you can uh, put multiple layers but the thing is that uh, the, the layer underneath always influences the uh, the colors that you put on top to a certain degree sometimes more sometimes a little bit less but if you want to make something really dark maybe you should put the darker pencil first so right now I'm just uh, going in with the other greens I put in a little bit of that lighter May green and then a bit of this uh, permanent olive green and notice how <clears throat> generally the canopy is a little bit darker at the bottom because it's uh, facing down and away from the light source and it's generally a bit darker the leaves are always a little bit darker when they're closer to the tree trunk and closer to the branches and th those parts of the canopy which are out on the outside obviously uh, they're going to be getting more light from above so now I'm going to work a little bit more on the texture of this tree trunk of this tree bark not going to do too much. <clears throat> I don't need to draw every single detail. I think uh, for a scene of this size it's already uh, detailed enough. And like I said, I mostly wanted to focus on the clouds. That's why I uh, devoted the larger portion of the video uh, to that part of the drawing process, uh, which didn't, didn't really take that long. I think the tree itself uh, was uh, a little bit more complex but like I said if you want to see uh, longer full-length narrated videos you can always check out my Patreon anyway um, I'm just shading the shadow side of the tree trunk because obviously I need to stay consistent with the light source and since the light source is more on the right the right side of the tree trunk is also going to be lighter just like the light side of the of those clouds and I'm even going to put a few touches of this lightest ivory colored pencil which is kind of like a yellowish white I'm going to put that on the light side just to uh, create some uh, lighter tones and also a little bit of that texture uh, to make the surface of the tree bark look a little more rough and a little more complex and obviously like I said because the left side is the shadow side, the uh, left side of the tree trunk is going to be a bit darker. So here I'm trying to position some of the elements in the background. I'm going to have some. I'm going to have a path uh, leading almost uh, from the horizon all the way to the foreground. And now I'm doing a bit of erasing on this uh, area around the bottom of the clouds because I want to put in some darker tones there, and I've already put down quite a bit of that white color and that light sky blue color so if I want to make some darker trees darker canopies on the horizon I I want to do some erasing first and then I'm gonna uh, put in some uh, lighter and brownish tones for this um, for this path maybe like a field in the distance I kind of thought about adding one here in the midground on the left as well, but I eventually decided against it and just added uh, a lot more of this, uh, a lot more of this May green, which will be my base color or base tone for the for the grass in the foreground. Here on the left uh, and over there on the in the background on the horizon. Those are just some trees, a row of trees and bushes and things like that. So I'm just going to add a bit of texture to it. And uh, as for those distant trees, I went over them with a touch of blue just to make them uh, look a little bit lighter, a little bit less defined and a little more bluish because of the atmospheric effect. Because that tends to happen when you look into the distance. 
Now these trees here, which are closer to the foreground, they are going to be a bit more defined, so I'm maybe even going to draw a, a few shadows in between those uh, individual canopies. I'm going to add uh, more contrast to them and obviously more texture. Texture usually means illusion of detail, illusion of the complexity of those canopies with a lot of foliage. So uh, for the for the stuff in the foreground, like foliage and uh, trees, you want to create a bit more texture. Here and there I also added some touches of that lighter green to increase the range of value on that, even though this part of the drawing doesn't really need to be as complex as the as the leaves on the on the tree in the foreground. So now I'm going to work on this path and on the grass a little bit. I want to make a winding path that kind of leads all the way to the bottom of the paper, all the way to the foreground. And then I'm going to have some grass around it. <clears throat> so it's like a field going through, the, it's like a path going through the fields and I'm adding some lighter tones to it as well. I'm going to have some shadow on the sides because obviously uh, the grass is taller than the path and it's going to be casting a bit of shadow onto the path. And I'm also going to uh, need to add a bit of shadow to the left of the tree as well because uh, the tree itself is going to be casting some shadow to the left because the, li the right source is on the the light source is on the right. <clears throat> Just adding a few details uh, with the lighter color pencil. This is a light green and a may, may green. Just using a combination of that to add some uh, lighter details on the grass. Just some lighter blades of grass. And I'm also adding some other tones to make the appearance of the grass less monotonous. Maybe a few clumps of grass on the dirt path itself and a few of those warmer ochreish tones. Notice that as I'm working my way downwards and uh, finishing the rest of my drawing, I'm kind of removing uh, those pieces of tape that I use to, to tape the, the paper down to hold it in place. I'm going to do that at the top eventually once I'm almost done. So here I added a bit of shadow coming from that tree because the tree like I said is casting a shadow more to the to the left and just finishing this uh, lower right part of the background doing a bit of blending doing a bit of layering and adding some random details here and there just another darker clump of grass here <coughs> and some some lighter blades of grass and these are just some of the finishing touches if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe because I have lots of videos uh, if you like landscapes. And also don't, don't forget to give me a like and comment on my videos. Now the drawing is done. I'm just putting down some finishing touches. Mostly adding some details in the foreground. And I'm just going to put a small signature in the lower in the lower left corner, like that. So that's it. The drawing is finished. I hope you found this demonstration on drawing clouds useful. I'm just going to add a few touches of the white colored pencil here. And I hope you like this scene. Once again, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And bye for now.